All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, homogeneous linear systems. And uh, a homogeneous linear system is simply one in which the right-hand side is the zero vector. The zero vector is just a vector of all zeros. So here's a, uh, another way to look at it. Uh, if we look at a times x as a linear combination of uh, the columns of a, as in here, x1, a1, plus x2, a2, plus dot, 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 xn, an, um, and we want that to equal the zero vector. Now, how can uh, that happen? Well, it's, uh, if you look at it a little bit, it's pretty clear that if you set each one of these x values equal to zero, then you do the linear combination and you'll end up with the zero vector. So therefore, a homogeneous system is always consistent. It's x equals zero, okay, all x values equal to zero is always a solution. And since it's always a solution and it's obvious that it's a solution, we call it the trivial solution. So we know that the system's consistent and uh, so if you think back uh, to the two questions that uh, we ask when we're solving a system, the first one is, is it consistent? So now we know this one is. So we move on to question two, which is, okay, is the solution unique or are there an infinite number of solutions? So in our case, um, if the solution is unique, that means you only have the trivial solution. So what we want to know is, um, do there exist any non-trivial solutions? Okay, is uh, the solution set uh, an infinite set? Well, uh, the answer uh, is just like it would be for any other system. You'll have non-trivial solutions or you'll have an infinite number of solutions if and only if your system of equations has at least one free variable. So we're going to look at a system here and solve it. And uh, we're going to write our solution in parametric vector form. So that's, that's something that's new in this section. All right, so here's the system. Um, we want to solve x equals 0. So we put it in an augmented matrix. So we tack on the column of zeros. And we do some row operations. And notice that um, I have put my augmented matrix in reduced echelon form, not just echelon form, but reduced echelon form. And that is because that makes it easier to not only write the solution in general form, but it makes it easier to write it in uh, parametric vector form. So anytime your system has an infinite number of solutions, then uh, it tends to be easier to write out the set of solutions if you put your matrix in reduced echelon form first. So looking at this matrix here, you can see that uh, x1 and x2, um, their pivot columns in the, in the x1 and x2 columns, pivot positions in the x1 and x2 columns, so those are basic variables. In the x3 column, we have no pivot position, so therefore x3 is a free variable. Okay, so that means we've got an infinite number of solutions, or this homogeneous system has non-trivial solutions. So what do they look like? Well, we can uh, look at the second row, and we get that um, x2, it must be equal to 3 times x3, and uh, x1 is going to be equal to negative 4 times x3. So we can write the general form of the solution as is given here. x3 is free. x1 and x2 are written in terms of the free variable. Now to get the parametric vector form of the solution, we start off with just a generic solution vector and basically just uh, copy down the general form of the solution. So this, uh, what you see here, comes straight from looking at the general form of the solution. And then to write it in parametric vector form, we simply factor out the parameter. In this case, x3 is the parameter because we can set x3 to be whatever we want in order to generate uh, as many solutions as we want. So we have it now in parametric vector form. Here's our parameter and here's our vector. Um, you should note that if you have more than one free variable, then you're going to have more than one 
um, parameter and um, vector when you write your solution in parametric vector form. So you'd have, uh, you know, if we had x4 that was a free variable, we'd have x3 times this vector plus x4 times some other vector and so forth. You'd have a vector for each uh, free variable. Okay, uh, let's think about the relationship between the systems AX equals 0 and AX equals B. So what we've done to this point is solved AX equals 0 for a particular matrix A. And now I want to keep that same A and solve the system AX equals B for this vector B given here. And we'll write our solution in parametric vector form. So we approach it the same way. Here's our augmented matrix. We do row operations. Whoops, sorry. Oop, backing up. There we go. Um, we're doing row operations um, to get the matrix in reduced echelon form. And if uh, you want to go back and compare with uh, what we did with AX equals zero, these are the exact same row operations. And that's because they were based on what was in the coefficient part of the matrix. Um, and so that hasn't changed. So we do the same operation. So the only thing that's changed is what's on the right hand side. Um, let me, um, whoops, I'm backing up again. trying to get used to my mouse trackpad here, sorry about that. Let me point out that um, when you're solving uh, AX equals zero and you have all zeros on the right hand side, then those zeros never change because when you do uh, elementary row operations, any of those three uh, elementary row operations, they will never change. If you start off with all zeros, you'll end up with all zeros. Okay, so back to this example though, when we um, write out our solution, notice x3 is still free variable, um, and now x2, when we write x2, then it's uh, going to be 3, the 3 here, uh, plus 3x3, and x1 is going to be negative 5 minus 4x3. So here's our solution, and if we just write it in general form, here's what it looks like. And... Um, parametric vector form. We start out just like we did previously, write out uh, what the general form looks like in a vector uh, format. And then uh, we're going to separate out the part that involves a parameter and the constant part. And then take it one step further and uh, factor out the parameter. And so notice that um, what we have here uh, is exactly the solution that we had to AX equals zero. And uh, then with AX equals B, we have that plus this constant vector. Now notice that the constant vector doesn't have a parameter associated with it. It's just constant and it doesn't change. But here we can multiply, we can set our parameter X3 to be anything and scale this vector. Okay, so um, in general, the solution looks like this. Uh, here was solution to AX equals zero. And notice that it's in this form. It's in the form some parameter T times a vector V. So in this case, X3 is plain T, and this is the vector V. So it's just a vector that we can scale any way we want. Whereas for AX equals B, you still got the TV part, right? You got X3 times this vector but you've got this constant vector, so that's what I'm calling P. And so for AX equals zero, you just have a vector that you can scale. For uh, AX equals B, you've still got the vector you can scale plus this other vector. So let's look at graphically uh, what is going on there. Now for, uh, for this, I'm gonna just uh, uh, look at a case in R2, so I'm so what you're going to see here is not the solutions to the system we were just looking at because that was in R3. Um, but it's a little bit easier when you draw pictures in R2. So that's what I've got here. So um, for AX equals 0, it's the solution set is all vectors of the form T times V. So here's a vector V. 
and we know that t times v is just any vector on this line. So the line that you see here is the set of all solutions to ax equals zero. Now let's look when we consider the vector p, okay, so for um, uh, solution set for ax equals b is um, of the form tv plus p and um, so remember all all the vectors along here are the t times v and then so for any of these vectors any point on this line you can add p and you'll have a, a vector of the form tv plus p so for Here's one. I just did v plus p. So 1 times v plus p. And uh, like doing the parallelogram method, you end up with this vector here. Um, we can do it for other vectors. So here's uh, p plus 2 times v. Um, here's p plus 0 times v. Here's p plus negative 1 times v. Okay, so notice though that they all fall along this line. You know, so right here would be p plus a half v, here p plus three fourths v, here p plus three halves v, and so forth. So, um, so for every vector, every solution to ax equals zero that you have on this line, there's a corresponding solution to ax equals b over here on this line. And so we end up with this um, approach where along the blue line that's all the solutions to ax equals zero along the magenta line here all solutions to ax equals b so notice that uh, for ax equals zero it's a line through the origin because uh, that's the trivial solution to ax equals zero and for ax equals b you're moving off the uh, away from the origin so off this line but parallel to the uh, solution set for ax equals zero. And uh, if you look in three dimensions, let's suppose we have a uh, problem where the solution set is a plane in three dimensions. So for ax equals zero, um, it's a plane like this red one that's going to go through the origin. And then for ax equals b, you get a parallel plane that's moved off the origin. So for, the, for ax equals 0, you'd get this red plane that goes through the origin. For ax equals b, you get a parallel plane that's off the origin.